introduction and Michael for an excellent uh, presentation on the execution plan. So really the role now for us today is to present uh, the progress we have done over the last uh, couple of weeks and uh, since um, last month when we introduced you to the, the team, the location of the project as well in Rollstown and the way um, you know, we're going to progress forward. So essentially, um, I'm just, I think Paul is going to say a few words about yeah. the execution plan. The, the BIM execution plan, and that was great to compliment Michael on his presentation this morning again. Um, I, my, I first cited this um, only about two weeks ago. Um, in January, we really started looking at some Finnish um, standards, which are the CoPIM standards, which for me were, were the essence of, of clarity, and which is, as an engineer, that's what I like about all standards. Um, but um, Michael has been, been a great help this morning, shown some light on it. But it is a big document, and it's going to take some time to, to, uh, to go through it. In, in addition, I think it's an absolutely essential document, especially if you think about collaborating, sharing the files across from one team to another team, especially in a cross-disciplinary context. So that's why we set up actually in this project, since we are doing the scheme design, that's what we're going to present today, is that before we start modeling and look at the survey information, we actually start to look at the standards within that execution plan. So uh, as Michael has mentioned, like you have the uh, AEC UK BIM standards, um, it talks about like, uh, even the file naming uh, so here you can see at the bottom the name of the file itself and I had to look actually at the documents quite you know, closely to see like what is the conventions and it's not too evident but like once you get a hang of it very quickly you get, uh, you know, you get the use of it. So we did the same thing here for the library objects naming um, and that's part of the template file for the project. You know all the, the objects have been renamed with a code, and that's unit class 2, and you have an A in front of it to say that this is the architect is the originator of the object. And then you have the layer naming. Now that's not applicable to all BIM platforms, but for instance, you know, you have we have set up a whole system as well, a layer set where you can see uh, the originator architects, the unit class 2 uh, coding system, and then the description here. And I think the pilot project is a great example to show how at the very beginning you can start to implement uh, the standards. Also there was a, a great mention of 1192 and this is um, just a representation of the diagrams uh, within the documents that can actually can appear quite confusing. Now it, it may be improved perhaps in the next uh, version but I think it was two or three years ago where you know, we had a presentation in London and we decided that look, we had to present this document in a legible format so we redesigned actually all the diagrams and we came up with this kind of a set of diagrams where you can very clearly see every single stage of the development of the project. So here you can see the working process um, from the architects, then it goes to the shared area. Every single bubble contains the information in relation to fit for purpose, fit for coordination, you know, all the coding. It's, you know, slightly uh, simplified but that can be elaborated on. And you see when the, the, the file is being shared and then you know the feedback is given then back to the, the architects. And that happens then a couple of times of course of all the different uh, parties involved. Then we go to the specification and tender stage, um, we go then to the contract stage, and at the end we, we finish with an as built model, you know, for the facilities management. And it's really portrayed into a sequential process that we start with the uh, concept design and develop all the way along to all these kind of stages to the FM stage. And at the moment we are in very early stages, a scheme design stage where it's you know specified within the document that look we work in our own practice doing this but um, this is actually quite relevant because you know um, we set the standards now and we will be aiming to talk. We actually we have been talking to all different professions as well to set, you know, to see if they can read our own information. And so this is why, like, you may wonder why I present this, you know, slightly obscure diagram, but I think it, it will all make sense at the end of the presentation and, and Paul will talk about uh, collaboration. So we um, received information from Crossway. Um, I'll, I'll just hand over quickly to, to Paul yeah. to explain. With, 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 with Crossway, as I said last, last month, all the team is contributing their time voluntarily, so everyone's restricted by 
other work that they have going on in the office. So, so we're all trying to fit this project in as best, best we can. The benefit that we have, I suppose, is that this project is, is going to carry out over the year, so it's a, it's a longer period of time maybe than a project of this nature would happen. So it gives us a real opportunity to really have a look at the technologies. This is a, uh, is a 3DS uh, terrain model we just got from uh, Coastway about, about a week and a half ago now. And one thing that's interesting, the format was, was, a, was a 3DS file that we were uh, basically able to input, but if you just if you look at it, it it's, it's, a, it's a surface, and the building is the, is the grey mass in the middle, and, and this is actually the import. We found one of the best ways to import it into, into ARCHICAD was, was to, uh, as to take it through, through SketchUp, so ARCHICAD can import a SketchUp file. And we were actually surprised how, how easily that was, that was able, able to happen. So the surface mesh there, you can see, you can spot, see the, the, the mesh basically takes the top of the trees and top of the building points, and, and a, a mesh will triangulate between all those points. But, so if, if you have a, just a pure uh, geometry surface, I think um, input of, of XYZ coordinates or input of a, of a mesh like that is just beautiful. But you have to be, I suppose, this is where the human intelligence aspects come into everything related to BIM, and that you have to look at, you know, what, what, what is the information that's odd, you know, the, the fact that surfaces don't triangulate you know, over buildings. So this is computer technologies that are applying to this. So. Perfect. I mean, you know, that's one of the terrain models we have received. But we also received cloud data. So here, um, this is uh, one actually, uh, you see the picture of the existing building up there. But at the bottom you can see, it looks like a black and white picture, but actually this is the cloud data available. It consists of millions of points that have a color value assigned to it. So it, it's quite handy to, uh, to, to have that within your own. I was actually process. amazed by the quality of, of, of the scan data. You can really zoom up close. You can actually read some of the text on the notice board. And also you can take dimensions then, like per um, you know, survey station, you can take exact dimensions you know, from the point on the floor up to the ceiling, it will give you a good value. Now of course there's a little problem sometimes when you, you just click uh, on a point and you don't know if the point is like 10 meters away or close by, so it depends really what point is being picked up. But one of the, the issues we had, of course, we are architects, we use Max apples. You know? Now, I didn't know that if that represented uh, orange and apple on the painting, but we are Mac heads and we have to, to deal with uh, uh, computers that, or with software that is running on PC only. You know? So we have to find a solution. We, we had to work with parallels. Now, of course, we could work with uh, Bootcamp as well to load up all the software. But it's a small little issue that needs to be resolved and needs to be thought about. So in, in the end, we could successfully use you know, all these, these kind of tools. And especially like for different BIM, BIM platforms as well that may not be available on the Mac, like through this you can, you can actually use it. And um, so we, we just started exploring the, the cloud um, data and uh, one of the very easy ways it was actually to import it into SketchUp, believe it or not, because like, you know, the software we use, Arcad, has no kind of by default import. So this is just, uh, you know, the survey station data for the point cloud. And once you go in there, you can see you know, uh, 3D points. But it's a big cloud. It's, it's quite difficult to really know exactly what's happening. Then I think like a, a few days after, we received a complete model of the building. Now, this is a simplified model. It was only like 300 megabytes. I think the original uh, data uh, file size for that building was, I think, 30 gigabytes. I had to drive over to Coastway, meet him in the offices, and download it on the computer. And even at that, the file was too big for me to, to, to be of any use. So it depends, like you have to you know, be careful how you deal with this, it takes a lot of data. Uh, Paul will talk about like, the, yeah. the impact it has on his broadband. Uh, like, like I, I think there's, a, there's an interesting thing, like m many times people deal with, coke, with, with, with uh, uh, a point cloud or, or surveyor data, uh, laser scan surveyor data, it, it's really that the surveyor could build a model. It was an interesting experience for us, it just so happened that coast we were very busy so we weren't able to get a model and we're conscious that the time is it's clicking, so we're looking at different ways of being able to deal with it. And I think there's a, there's a lot, maybe with all BIM tools, there's a certain fluency that comes with, with use. So when you initially look at some of these tools, it's really hard to, to navigate around through the, through the cloud to, to, to find, um, basically really even to orientate your sense sometimes. So, so sometimes you might conclude that it's actually better to leave it to the surveyors and get them to give you a fully finished, you know, as, as built model. But there's no harm being able to understand that this is, this, these are kind of, 
data issues that you're dealing with. And also, like, of course, you had to look like the information you received was two weeks ago. And you were asked to do a scheme design to do the existing building and scheme design within two weeks. And especially dealing with uh, uh, point cloud data that we never used before <laughs> on a Mac. So uh, the challenges were there, certainly. And we learned a lot of lessons, and hopefully we can uh, share that, them with you. This is like a, just a screenshot of Rhino. We just had a quick che check. And unluckily enough, you didn't have the time to, to really play around with it. But it allows you to, uh, to create shapes and forms that then can be imported in any kind of other platform. Uh, so we started actually importing, trying to import it into our, our, our platform and we, we found this kind of a little uh, plugin that uh, allowed us to do that and it's, you know, it's, we took the simplified uh, point uh, data model, it's, it's only 300 uh, megabytes but like it still took quite a while to process and this is just, I have to, to do this like a screenshot of the progress bar to see that look, it, it, it took actually an hour and a half uh, you know, to import in a simplified form and to, to import the whole thing took like I think eight and a half hours. So the computer was working overnight. And uh, at some point in time, we were there, like up in the clouds, like, look, what are we doing? Can we see anything here? Coastway is fantastic. They have been dealing with this kind of a, uh, technology for years now. And we were just there, you know, is anything going to happen? But then it's success, you know, after like a, an hour and a half. At least we had something there on plan. It's not highly usable, but like when you look at a 3D view, you can see an extremely simplified version of the point cloud. But then again, every single point represents something. So, um, you know, it, it was of, of some use. But then it's very difficult to, to draw, you know, from that. So we had to go back to Postway. They give us then slices through the, the point cloud uh, data model uh, at, at different intervals. So we have a plan, we have sections as well. There we overlay the section, uh, the octo, uh, ortho rectified images with the point cloud data, and based on that, then we could draw uh, the building model, and based on all the standards, of course. So here you can see a very initial kind of approach where even the terrain model was, a, not, was not a correct height, we started building the model. So, you know, it can happen in 2D or 3D, it's just very interactive with, with this. Um, so, this is the, the completed model. Uh, this is with the, uh, the walls and roofs being transparent, so you see you know, a bit of the internal structure. And once you apply textures on the model, it looks suddenly a bit more realistic. And it gives you a good platform, actually, to, to make decisions, really informed decisions on how you're going to tackle with this you know, existing building. And, of course, as any kind of wind platform, you can slice and dice through the model as you want and just create a lot of information, like in the form of plans, or sections and, three, you know, sections and elevations. So, you know, it's just a given that now it, they are automatically uh, driven out of the model, which is uh, fantastic. And you have to be careful as well to draw usage zones in, in three dimensions from where the, uh, the a Kobe data drop can be generated. And also you can generate uh, automatically uh, generated uh, zone schedules you know, with different uses, so for the existing and proposed uses. Uh, we then actually, from Archicad, then we saved it as a SketchUp file, we put it back into SketchUp and overlaid it to the, the full point data, which was quite detailed, and, and, and this one. I, I should, should add as well, we, 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 we tried playing with, well, I suppose, playing with the code, you know, with the point cloud, is, is, a, is, a, is a good way. We, we played with it, we used a, a demo version of, of, uh, of Revit as well to handle the post cloud, which actually which worked very well as well. So, um, it's it's uh, we ideally we should have had maybe two months to try this out and to really assess all different uh, software. Because like I was really looking forward even to try, you know, um, Revit or Bentley systems, you know, to see how they dealt with the point cloud. But unfortunately, like we have our own projects running at the same time, we had to present something within two weeks, so we just had to make very quick decisions. And it is like Bernard talks about you using them. I use based Mac based, but I'm, I'm definitely Windows based. Never used a Mac before, but. Well, Windows 7 and 64 bit, there was, no, there was actually no problem. Actually, some of the surfaces could come in easier for me, so I was taking some of those surfaces and passing them, <coughs> passing, passing them back. Um, one, of the, one of the issues with the terrains was actually locating it, you know, and, and uh, when you have overlays to, to align them with, it, with an origin, whereas the origin, you know, and I suppose that's something that's addressed in the, in the execution. We also found out as well, look, when you draw a model, you do it once correctly, because like once you, you you don't do it correctly, that the energy um, application, you know, energy analysis application, for instance, EcoDesigner that we use, they can use EcoDex or any other one. 
that it will not recognize zone boundaries correctly. Here you can see a screenshot of you know, the blue faces which are unfaced uh, areas, meaning like there's a problem. So it will not recognize that there's a wall behind it or beside it. So this is a result you know, zone that's just uh, a <coughs> But one you know, um, of the slabs was not drawn correctly. It was half a millimeter off. And that threw off the complete energy analysis uh, software. And it showed us that, look, model accuracy is very, very important at the very, very beginning. Once it's properly set up, then you can continue and build on the you know, sustainable ground. Then the model was shared uh, via Tecla uh, BIM site. Like we exported IFC, so a lot of platforms uh, could use it. And uh, our intention initially was to use a good online you know, collaboration platform. Yeah, and uh, Team Platform is, as I hadn't heard of it before, actually, uh, Coastway is something that they use all the time, so they were recommending it, they were sharing some of the model files um, through it, but um, I suppose I, 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 the idea was that yeah, it would be great to be able to use um, uh, ProjectWise, which is uh, Bentley's uh, collaboration product, and it's something that I, I'd, only, I'd only heard, heard about, never used, I wouldn't be too, fam too familiar with, with um, many of these uh, uh, different tools. Um, for the nature of a project, maybe it's it's uh, it's, it's it's too big or complicated, and I'm hoping I'm hoping that it's not that we can we can still get 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 to use it if we can if we can upscale. Um, but the exchange format definitely we've taken a, an open bin, I suppose, view on, on this that, that IFC we want the, to be the neutral format, and in, in if you talk about standards and to be um, the most um, universally capable, well, building smart have, have created the, this I, the, the IFC. And I think every year it's just going to get better and better. Um, it was one way for us to validate the models as well and the integrity of, of models by running them through um, Techlift Insight and, and Celebri. And they're free viewers that anyone can, can look at. So. And also, just to say, we use Dropbox. It's not the most uh, technologically advanced way of sharing models because you don't have uh, actually full uh, data on who's viewing the information what and when and track the progress. But like, that's something to improve on. Yeah, there actually is a there's a Dropbox uh, team cure that's come out, but I, like, I, I don't know, that's, and I believe Dropbox have now relocated their headquarters to Ireland, so maybe that's something that might happen in the future. Just on, uh, going back to the brief, this is part of the mind map that you might remember from, from last month about this was the client team. We actually had, we had a meeting with, with Fingal uh, County Council in, in, their, in the county hall in Swords, and then also with, with Councillor Tom Keller, who's the principal of, this, of the neighbouring school. Um, the building, and it was a I suppose from that meeting we had a great idea, when we started this project we had a great ideas about what we could possibly do with this site. And uh, we've been involved in a project before where you pick a virtual part of the world and you just go and throw loads of technology at it and you can do lots of great stuff and, and try the different tools. This is, it became pretty clear that this is a, this is a, this is a, 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 real, a real site in a, in a real part of, of scenic North, North County Dublin. And um, so that raised the issue of, of um, a community, I suppose community concerns about what people are both doing in their in environment. So we definitely have to be respectful of that and we have to be sensitive to, to their needs. And, and, and really it came down to what, what the community, if you like, were looking for this facility. It was a very simple, simple brief that, 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 that arose from that refurbishment of the building. So the lighting was very, didn't, didn't really work so well. Term efficiency was, was, was terrible. And also it's a, with, with the local caretakers. So it's a really, and we see this project, as, this is kind of like a little microcosm of every little small village and town in, in Ireland, where, where we have, um, so, and they're, and they're really, they're just looking for a, a retail and meeting area. And if we were to go, I think all kind of council said they're very interested in the project, but definitely they're, they don't see themselves as the client, but they're interested in the overall process, particularly the senior planners there. I just saw a sign in five yeah. minutes, yeah. so I think we'll have to move on. Just, and I still have 40 slides to go through, so I, I don't know how many yeah. seconds I have per slide. So I'll just bring yeah. it through, and yeah. at the end I'll give you the, yeah. the mic again. Yeah. So, brief, uh, last time, um, look, we have this kind of a village design framework plan, we explained it all, you can look back at the video back then, but it gives a good kind of indication on, on what to do uh, at you know, the main street, the new main street, so that was an indicative uh, design. Uh, the uses is like different uses uh, at the moment within the sports hall. You can see uh, when you looked at uh, the building use analysis that they have very innovative solutions, how to store elements within the building on stage. Um, we also have, you know, a subdivision of the sports hall when the drama society is using it. And um, 
So in the end, you know, on a building like that, it would be very easy to do the other way and say, look, let's use a, just a new site and build something completely different. But actually, this is an existing building. Uh, the funds are not there to actually uh, to demolish it and create a new building. So let's use it and refurbish it. So let's come back. Let's, let's actually uh, talk about the scheme design, which is actually the, the main focus of this uh, presentation. Um, we went extremely high tech actually on this, and uh, we went back to the you know to nature and to the beach, and we had our first workshop in uh, I think Bridges Bay, and we collaborated uh, oh, yeah. over here. Philip Gagan. Philip Gagan and Ross indeed, and we had our own outline sketch on the signs, <laughs> not even pen and paper, even for that. So it was quite interesting, and you can mix it then with you know Photoshop uh, slides and you know show the design intents of the first story and you know. Uh, the proposal wrapping around then the, the existing building. But then we went back to the office and we, we used uh, uh, Vasari um, and Ecotech's wind tunnel just to analyze uh, the building. And you can see the, the wind uh, blowing from the north side and also from the south side here. And you can see that the face of the building, the entrance is quite windswept. So, you know, it gives us, uh, you know, food for thought, absolutely. So, uh, but then you can get carried away, you can start designing different <coughs> roofs and using different features. And, but at some point, like, look, we had to stop, we had to start actually designing the actual building. So uh, we went using Skype and Dropbox and different methods. We start, you know, designing uh, the building interactively online. And, you know, like I had a little tablet in Photoshop, I took a screenshot of the, the screen or sometimes I had the 3D window open. And I started designing it as we were talking and, you know, we just created new layers in Photoshop and just, you know, put them on and off. And once uh, outline design was uh, established, then we could, I could model it, you know, uh, slightly and come up with a slightly, you know, improved design. Uh, we checked then as, as well again the proposal in uh, in, in Ecotex wind tunnel. You can see when you know the wind is blowing from the north that you know the new little extension is deflecting the wind, creating a more kind of a protected, uh, you know. Uh, urban space right in front of the entrance, and I think we have the same thing. So uh, let's move on to the plan. Uh, one aspect of the brief was to create a retail element within the plan, and here you can see the location of the, the shop manager. That he's, he, he will be central. That he can control the entrance to the hall, uh, also his own shop, the streetscape, and also what's happening within the building. And you know you can then um, you know elaborate a bit more offline doing all these kind of, you know, uh, nice little plans and, you know, develop it a bit more. I'll actually, I know we only have a few minutes left. Uh, Paul will then uh, speak now about the uh, collaboration. Yeah, we can no, yeah, just, you just take it on. So. Yeah, so, so back then well, we, we have, like, uh, Trevor Woods construct IT, so he's, he's a copy of the model, he's a copy of the IFC model, he's, he's, he's looking at that. Um, and Board of FM, I've actually just received stuff yesterday evening on, on some of the issues that, that uh, Bobby has raised and a lot of them not, not, su not surprising. Also, N, N the Grimes has done a program for us to, to, to match the, the, the series and, um, and Pierce McMahon is actually working on a tech and model of the existing which we want to take. We want to do some analysis on that ourselves. John Sri and uh, Colin Reed couldn't be, he was actually in court um, this, this week, no, he's not, he's as an expert witness. And uh, so, so, but he he'll be he'll be back on, on next week. So, and and, and for for me, it's, it's I suppose it's, it's difficult trying to work through, you know, all, all these all, all, all these issues while you have your own your own stuff going on. But we're I think we're nearly getting to the stage where we'd like to do some structural analysis on on the existing building. This is some of the some of the I suppose quality assurance we've done. You take a, a bit of model and that's a comparison of Tech of Inside and, and Salibri. And uh, there's actually some, some difference, slightly difference in, in quantities, maybe maybe less than the five or ten percent, which I thought was interesting. We'd like to take take these files and run them through now, and that works as well and do a do a comparison. Um, we just haven't got around to that yet. But uh, I'd say just 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 run on. Run on. And if uh, so so we've been I've been liaising with on, on, on Skype with with with, with Bernard. It's um, pretty much uh, you know there there's been a tandem I suppose the design development similarly with the existing building what with possibilities and um, this is a shot of my internet uh, usage at the office in the last uh, the last three weeks and basically I've I've, I've gone um, basically 32 gig of, of data I've had to deal with and one of the one of the issues with Dropbox I suppose if you Dropbox on a load of different machines 
and you download a 2.5 gigabyte point cloud, um, it actually syncs to all machines. So you're, you're four machines, it ends up being 10 gigs straight away. You know, and, and it just so the information issues are. So I'd say we, we, we dealt with this the last time, but the point is we have a vision that we developed right at, at the start, and uh, we now with with Barry McCauley, he's put KPIs to that to that to that vision. So we're trying to work with that. We're trying to measure what we're doing and the effectiveness of, of what we're doing. And the last few slides is just to show that, look, you know, we showed you this building at the very beginning, the existing building. Now we actually we have a model, of the, a good model of the existing building. We know, that, you know, what elements are going to be demolished, and we have a scheme design. So I think we are well set for the developed design as, you know, to be presented at the next time. So I think all well, I want to say maybe something. Yeah, we, we were over in just in February, but like we were at the launch of, of Building Smart UK. I think people should take note of that Building Smart, the management of Building Smart UK in Ireland, it's called, but. But um, I'm not sure whether the, the full represent, representation from from Ireland. Certainly, I'm a I'm a member now. Um, but but I think there's the whole project. The, the whole project is is tying back to this. That what we have the vision of this beam and how good or what's the real value of it. Where how can we cut through the hype? And I suppose we're we're trying to take we're trying to take some action. So first steps. Thank you.